the battle ended only when whales abandoned the tropics for colder waters. Without them to prey on, Megatooth died out, leaving its awesome legacy to the Great White. From its earliest incarnation uncovered in Glasgow to the modern-day Great White, the shark has perfected a design first created over 350 million years ago. It remains the undisputed king of the deep. But in another part of Scotland, a prehistoric legacy is believed to live on. In Scottish folklore, an evil spirit dwells in Loch Ness that lures unwary travelers to their graves. Scotland's Saint Columba saw it 1,400 years ago. Since then, 10,000 sightings have been reported, such as this one by veteran tugmaster Willie Brodie. With two humps, and it kept pace with a tug. It was like a humpbacked whale. It then briefly disappeared and reappeared again quite close to the tug, this time with seven humps and a coiling motion. It tore past the tug at a great rate of knots. Such a description could fit the great sea monsters that ruled the oceans 150 million years ago. Paleontologist Mike Benton of Bristol University has taken time out to look into the story of the mysterious beast that lurks in the loch. For centuries, mariners have reported giant creatures that would come from the depths and would seize their ships, plucking mariners from the decks and crushing the boat and pulling it under the waves. Well, last century, a giant squid was pulled from the Pacific with tentacles 70 feet long. So that at least was one sea monster that turned out to be real. It's not surprising that a loch hemmed in by brooding hills, worn smooth by ancient glaciers, should produce such a haunting legend. Laden with peat, its murky water makes underwater sightings virtually impossible. 38 kilometers long, one and a half kilometers wide, Loch Ness is the second deepest loch in Scotland, ideal for a monster in hiding. Hundred and fifty million years ago, the Jurassic was a time of giants. On land, dinosaurs 18 meters tall were coming into their own. Pterosaurs ruled the air. And in the sea, colossal reptiles, among them three heavyweight contenders for the Loch Ness Monster. First of all, there were the ichthyosaurs. These were dolphin-like animals which could swim very fast and they fed on a variety of fishes and, and uh, squid. Secondly, there were the mosasaurs. These were overgrown lizards with strangely hinged jaws that could grapple with their prey. And some of the mosasaurs were very large, uh, as much as 40 feet in length. There were the plesiosaurs. That's the most popular uh, candidate for the Loch Ness Monster, with its long neck and long tail, and some of those could be truly gigantic as well. These fantastic creatures did exist. One of them could have pulled off the great escape from Jurassic Park. Two centuries ago, these bleak and treacherous cliffs at Lyme Regis on the southern coast of England loomed over a vast prehistoric world yet to be discovered. No one dreamed sea monsters could be real. But one day in 1810, Young Mary Anning was scouring the beach, looking for fossil shells to sell to support her widowed mother. Although she had no formal training, 12-year-old Mary knew enough to recognize the unusual bones protruding from the cliff. They belonged to the first complete skeleton of an ichthyosaur ever found.
No one appreciates the significance of the discovery more than paleontologist Hugh Torrens. It's nice to be following in Mary Anning's footsteps. I've been coming here for 30 years, and I'm reminded on a day like this of how extraordinarily dangerous it is. You look at the cliffs, see how fragile and delicate they are, and you are, I think, struck that a, a young girl was doing this and developing this extraordinary reputation as one of the founding figures of the study of fossils. The discovery made young Mary famous, and the fossils she found here were sold for large sums of money. She learned rapidly that the different limestone layers exposed by the slumping of the weak black clays contained fossils from different time periods. She found a whole series of discoveries, and I suppose the most famous is the one that she made when she was a child. This is the first ichthyosaur to come to scientific attention, which caused a storm in London because it was such an unknown and unexpected animal. The ichthyosaur, which means fish lizard, had a long pointed snout with sharp cutting teeth, unusually large eyes, and a body shape superbly equipped for rapid movement through the water, much like modern dolphins. Theirs was an award-winning design. They survived in seas around the world for over 150 million years. They were beautifully streamlined, fast-swimming animals. Like dolphins, they also had to come up to breathe from time to time. I'm surprised I haven't seen one yet. Scotland is not the only country haunted by a legendary sea dragon. Canada's most famous monster, Ogopogo, lives in Okanagan Lake, a deep finger lake in British Columbia. And the director of the Department of Fisheries for Quebec officially announced that a strange large animal is living in Lake Pehenigamook, the Indian word for monster. Could a few scattered ichthyosaurs be hiding out in North America? Two hundred million years ago, water covered much of present-day Nevada. Today, three hours from Reno, is Ichthyosaur State Park. Jennifer Hogler is the resident paleontologist. 200 million years ago, the oceans here were swarming with ichthyosaurs. Today, this canyon is the richest source of ichthyosaurs anywhere in North America, and these hillsides are littered with their fossils. <laughs> 